just like a new job or venture, being a first-time father come, comes with feelings of anxiety and uncertainty for a lot of people. This could be worsened, especially when a man has no clue about what to expect or had no great fatherly experience themselves. That's what Dr. Akofa Segbefia's situation was over three decades ago when he was expecting his first child. He later single-handedly raised six children after he and his wife divorced. I spent some time with a former journalist and lecturer. As we look forward to celebrating fathers, we just thought, let's just give you a visit. Um, we've heard of how you've single-handedly taken care of five ladies, four of them your own one, adopted, and a gentleman. And uh, we're just here to understand how you did it, the challenges you faced, what other men can learn from you who are in your, your circumstance. And let's also get that, uh, those nuggets. What made you uh, succeed at taking care of your own children, especially with those numbers? So let's start. Um, I see a lot of photos here, if you don't mind, running us through your gallery, especially your children, so we know who they are. <laughs> well, uh, first, uh, I mean, just close here, you see my, my twin daughters. Yeah, uh, Safako on the right, Sayram on, on the left. Mm. Yeah, Sayram is out of the country, she's in Birmingham right now. Okay. Safako is here with the husband. Mm. And here are all of them. You see, uh, this, this, this are my children. Uh, that was on my 50th birthday. We took this on my 50th birthday a couple of years ago. The one second from right is the eldest, uh, Edzoji. She's now Mrs. Kantamaklo, you know. And then the twins, that's uh, Sayram and Safako. And then my only son, Jiedzong. And then my youngest daughter, Salasi, who is in the United States with her husband. Now, yeah, my only son is, uh, I think he's, he's just done with his thesis for his PhD. So it means he's going to be a doctor, some of your junior, who knows that, <laughs> you know. And, uh, you know, uh, the old man you see over there happens to be my father's twin brother. Yeah, that's my father's twin. My father were twins, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, when I was growing up, I used to say I was also going to have a set of twins. And you did. And I did. And I had twins twice. I lost the first set to oh, a so boy and a girl. I mean, they died within 48 hours after that. I don't know what happened. You know, in those days, uh, medicine was not as sophisticated as medicine is today. But they didn't survive. But the second set that happens to be... Uh, you know, the young mm. ladies, yes, mm. yes. Mm. You told us about what Dear John is doing, but what about the others? What are they doing? Um, Ed Zoji is, uh, until very recently, she was the circulations manager at New Times Corporation. Uh, Jason has set up his own, my boy, he has set up his own uh, Brave Hearts, you know, he calls it, they go kayaking, mountaineering into this nature business. So he's most of the time out of the country. As we are chatting now, I don't even know where he is. For all you know, he could be in Mozambique, you know, that kind of thing. And then uh, one of the twins, uh, Sefako, she works with, uh, I think uh, Ecobank has a microfinance department. She's working there. And then uh, Salasi is with her husband in the United States because he's on scholarship. He's just, he's just done with his... Uh, PhD, the husband. Okay. So uh, now that he's done with it, she's now going to do her masters. I, I'm sure we'll, we'll talk more, um, especially about how you brought your children up. But let me take you way back in time. How did you make it through these years, and and even having to father uh, six children alone? Um, you know, as for the reason why we had to part ways. It's not for public consumption because she might have her side of the story. You understand? I wouldn't want to, you know, uh, say anything that can be contradicted. So, well, when it turned out that I became a single father, you know, already when I was still married, I was a cook in the house most of the time. I can easily count the number of times that my wife cooked during the time that we were married. But 
I was I was doing the cooking. That does not necessarily mean that my children don't know how to cook. You know, they observed, I taught them because one, I am a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian for the past uh, 45, 46 years before I started giving birth to them. You know, but I never imposed my diet on my children. So even when they were in the university, I could go to Kaneshi Market here, buy meat, buy crabs, their favorites and all that, come home, prepare palm nut soup, prepare, uh, the, what do you call it, contumbre, uh -huh. then okra stew, carry them all the way to, you know, uh, is it, where were they? Were they in Sabah Hall? Yes, so one of those halls and gave it to them. And some of their mates were amazed that their dad could do this, you know. The, 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 the challenge, you know, to me was when they reached the age of puberty. Because at that time, you know, there are certain biological changes in them. You needed to let them know what is happening to them. So when it happened, you know, as a father, what would you do? Because I was with them alone, so the, the, the relationship was very, very intimate, so to speak. Especially when the twins were with me, because the senior one was in Aburi Girls at the time. And when the first one had her first menstrual flu, you know, she didn't know what it was. She only called me, Daddy, this is what is happening to me, and all that. So I gave the first, I want to call it my first aid, what to do. I gave her a note. When she went to school, one Mrs. Kubale, you know, uh, this is what is happening. You are a woman, they will understand you better. Do this for me. So she gave, she put her through, you know, the process of what to do when you're in your period and all that kind of thing. And the very next day, the other twin also had the same experience and had to go through the whole thing. And as a father, what I did was, you see, because at that time, they were developing, they were becoming beautiful and all that kind of thing. So the guys were watching. Do you understand that? So I sat back and I would smile and I say, this is the master of the game. What do you do? You understand that? So I had to, you see, because children are better able to communicate and confide in friends rather than parents. You know, parents have a certain, there is a certain limitation, but I didn't do that. I rather became that friend between my children and the friends they would otherwise have been listening to. So they could confide in me, they could tell me things and all that kind of thing. It was, it was quite challenging because in spite of that, you, you, you would see, you know, guys wouldn't, you know, so you, I had to devise my own means of keeping them busy at all times so you wouldn't have time, they wouldn't even have the time to, you know, socialize with, not that they didn't, socialize but there was a limit to whatever they had to do and also um i had a lot of books i mean when i was when i was coming back from further studies i brought in over 700 books but because this place had been flooded and all the books was went under so these are the only books that you know i have left and a few others that are in cartons you know uh, to save them from you know further you know flooding and all that kind of thing so there were times when Friends would want to visit them. They would be in this room. And when, especially when they were on holidays, for a whole week, nobody would know that anybody was in the house because daddy was reading, everybody else was reading. So if mates came, they didn't have time because they were you know, involved in what they were reading. So you either come as a friend, then look for a book and sit with them and start reading, or you find an excuse to get the hell out of my home. <laughs> you understand that? Mm. Uh -huh. So that's how I inculcated the virtue of reading in my children. My children are avid readers. All right, so at, at this point, I, I just want us to get into probably a reflective mood. Okay. When you were getting married, or as a young man, how did you envisage marriage and raising children? What, what was that? dream that you had? No, you see, as a matter of fact, I, I didn't know what marriage was. <laughs> I didn't know. And I didn't know what it was to have children. I didn't know what it was to be, as I said earlier on. But, you know, when I was in secondary school, that's when you began to, uh, let, let me see, a vista of knowledge was opened to you. 
you know, because you were in the boarding house. Some of the young guys who were even younger than me, they came out with their escapades with girls and all that kind of thing. I was still a virgin when I went to secondary school. I was still a virgin when I came out of secondary school. You understand that I keep saying that, and with pride, that the first time I had any sexual encounter with any woman resulted in my first daughter. That is why I never joke with my first daughter. You know, so I didn't know what it was, you know, to be a father or to be, but when my lady was pregnant, that's when I had to lock myself up in my room and ask for divine, uh, you know, knowledge. So it was the third night or so that a voice called me and said, you can make it, but be the opposite of your father. Now, I hadn't stayed with my father from 1957 until I went to secondary school in 1967, 10 years. I realized my father never carried any one of his children on his lap, the way fathers do now. And so I realized, no, in that case, I have to be friends with my children. That was the first thing I learned. Okay, my father wasn't talkative, but because I had trained as a teacher, so as a teacher, you need to talk. You can't go to the class and sit and be watching your school children. That's how I became talkative as well. And so, but I never saw my father help any of his wives in any circumstance. I mean, physically, no. I never saw anything. But I realized that no, I owed it a duty, you know, to, to be a hands-on person. So at the time that I was even married, you know, I did find art. So what I did was, in those days, when the, 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 little, the little kid pooped, you know, you had to wash it, you know, the napkins. And I had a style of drying them on the dry line. And that was even a sight to behold. I'm sure a lot of young men are saying, this is, may not be as easy as Doc is painting it, because they find themselves in the situation now. But they look forward to sitting here like you're doing in some years to come and also saying, look, these are my children, I'm proud of them, I raised them. What are the things such people should be doing? What are the tips you'd give them? You know, I would not condone separation or divorce because I have gone through it. And um, there are times that I feel like having a, a female companion around me and all that. But uh, I've come a very long way what I would rather young men, young fathers have now is that they have a role to play in the upbringing of the children. Money, yes, it's good to have wealth to take care of your children, but you cannot chase wealth to the detriment of your child's upbringing. You know, so let us always have time for the child. You know, when your wife is busy doing something for the home and you are less busy, bond with the children. Leave the computer alone. Once you are home, let the home belong to the family, to you and the children and your spouse. Once you do that, you see, it is, it is the bonding that builds the, 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 the relationship. You understand that? So you, you need to discuss the roles I know there are men who, if they, even if they want to boil eggs, the eggs will burn. You understand that? What is wrong with learning how to cook? I could have been a better father than I have been. So when I hear people say, oh, just like it was all over your newsroom when you wanted to interview a father, everybody said, Dr. Sabura, I was like, ah. <laughs> How come? You, 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 you understand that? Yes, I, I wish there were other fathers out there who are examples. Yeah. There is a saying in my language that uh, You see, it is the goat that has strayed, that has got its ear chopped off. That is best advisor to its kids. You understand that? I, I have been there. With the benefit of hindsight, certain things that I did that might have contributed even to the break in my marriage. You know, if it were happening today, I would just laugh those issues away. You know, but in those days, you had your hot blood, you had, you know, that youth thing, that intolerance and all that kind of thing. So you needed to learn 
to tolerate. It's, 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 you know, it's it's a give and take. You see, and in every relationship, you know, just give a little of yourself. You'll be surprised what you receive in return mm. from your partner. You can catch more in subsequent bulletins and here on the Joy News channel. As we look forward to Father's Day, we decided to have that conversation with Dr. Segbefia, a single father of six children, five his own and one adopted. Mm -hmm.